Hey everyone, welcome to the presentation. My name is Russ Stevens and today I'm gonna to show you how to prepare your building company for COVID-19 and avoid running out of cash during the impending downturn. Now, before we get started, I just wanna make sure that you can hear me okay and that you can see my screen. So please type into the chat box and let me know whereabouts in Australia, New Zealand, Canada, or the USA you're tuning in from. Thanks, Jeff. I'm uh, very fortunate to have Peter with me today. Peter will be acting as moderator. So any questions you have as we work through the presentation, then uh, please type them in the chat box and Peter will be there to help out with the answers. But um, okay. Hello, David. Tom in Wollongon. Uh, Grant, Fox, New Zealand. Philip, Casarina, New South Wales, not far from here. Simon from Sydney. Hey, Simon. We've got uh, Manish in Australia, Jeff from Sydney, Australia, Vancouver, Anna Marie in Vancouver. Called it? Hey, called it? Thanks, guys. So I presume that you can see my screen and you can certainly hear me okay. Now, this is a special presentation for members of the Association of Professional Builders. However, in light of the rapid deterioration of the current situation, we've decided to make this presentation available to all builders, not just members. So the first thing that I would like to mention is that because we originally created the information for our members, we will be referencing a couple of tools that are only available to members of the Association of Professional Builders inside your portal. However, the strategies and the tactics that we are going to be sharing over the next 45 minutes is usable information of value to all residential home builders, regardless of if you are a current member or not. So although the tools we mentioned will help with execution, you do not need to be a member in order to execute the strategies that we are going to share with you. So members and non-members, welcome to the presentation. Now I can see we have more builders joining as we, as we speak here. Hi, Ted in uh, Illinois, USA. Now, before we get started, um, I just want to get a feel for who is online with me today. So can I ask you to let me know what type of building work you are primarily focused on? Is it new homes, renovations, commercial, or something else? Or even if you're not a builder, type in the chat box and let me know what industry you're in. So just go ahead. Now, we do have a couple of guests with us today from the Master Builders and the HIA in Australia, and also from the National Association of Home Builders in the USA. So welcome to you guys as well. Excellent. So all builders, which means the marketing worked. Now, so that I can make sure that I am covering the most applicable strategies for your business, can you also let me know how many projects that you do a year? So just select the option that relates to how many projects you expect to start this year. And that will just enable me to make sure that I'm tailoring this presentation to be most relevant to your building company. I'll just give you a quick moment just to, to click on. This really does help me get a feel for who we have on with us live today. Thank you, guys. Excellent. And one last question. Can I just ask you guys uh, to let me know what what size jobs that you're targeting? Now, some guys are are focused on volume. So, you know, they tend to target a lower contract value in order to keep the jobs simpler. But uh, other builders might be doing more complex builds, which obviously has an impact on how the building company is structured because custom homes require a lot more problem solving throughout the build process. And uh, guys, your time is valuable. So I want to make sure that uh, you get maximum value out of the next 45 minutes or so that we're on together. That's great. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. So from what you've shared with me here, I think this is going to be a real eye opener 
for you guys. So let's get started. Now, I'm guessing for a lot of you, this is probably not the first bit of advice that you've heard regarding surviving COVID-19. So the first thing that I do want to mention is that if you find yourself in a position where you don't already have the necessary reserves in place to see you through the next 12 months, then it's really not your fault. Because the problem is generating net profit and retaining strong reserves is not something that is taught or even actively encouraged in small business. Now, for those of you who have been members of the Association of Professional Builders for a number of years, and I can see some of you guys uh, that are on this presentation have been with us since we launched way back in 2014. Now, you guys have been progressively building up your reserves, and I know because you've told me it's been hard, not just avoiding the temptation to spend the money, but because you've come under pressure from your accountants to take the money out of the business and invest it. Well, guys, this is why we build up reserves. We've all spent the last five years planning for this moment. Now, we didn't know the virus was coming, but we did know that there would be a downturn. And that is why we do what we do. However, now is not the time to be complacent and simply rely on those reserves to see us through. Plans now need to be put in place to ensure that you do not waste the position that you now find yourself in. And if you find yourself in a position where you don't have the necessary reserves in place, then it is imperative that you execute the steps that I'm going to take you through today as quickly as possible and without any hesitation. Now, that applies especially to non-members who maybe are more likely to hold back and maybe just second guess themselves before taking action. But there is no time left to spare. You've already taken the first step by attending this presentation. Next, you need to take notes and then take action. And that is why it is so, so important to just take a moment right now and get yourself prepared before we start. Turn your mobile onto silent, turn off notifications on your computer, close your door and even put a do not disturb note on it. Use one of those little yellow post-it notes, then pull out a pen and a pad and get ready to take notes because we will be moving fast in order to get through anything and I don't want you to miss out because this information could be the difference between success and failure for your building company over the next 12 months. So if you're thinking that the current virus is unlikely to affect your building company and that it's mainly a problem for the travel industry, retail or restaurants, then think again, because the fact is, regardless as to whether you think the media, investors and the government are overreacting, the fact is every single business is affected because what affects your clients affects your bottom line. And this situation is affecting everyone. Now, you may have been encouraged to believe that this will all blow over quite quickly and that we're soon going to return to normal or that the government's emergency measures will enable small business to get through the next few months or that there is simply nothing you can do other than wait and see what happens. But if you do that, you've already given up because there will be winners and losers emerging from this in 2021. And those builders that prepare now will be the ones cleaning up when the dust settles. And whilst we are all facing an enormous challenge ahead of us, this moment in time has also presented us with a tremendous opportunity. Now, governments already know that they can't stop this virus. And you may have already heard that what they're now trying to achieve is a flattening of the curve. Because if the virus was to spread too quickly, then obviously our healthcare systems would just be hopelessly overrun. So they are now trying to slow the spreading of the virus over a much longer period of time. And it's modeled largely on what happened in 1918 when Philadelphia failed to prevent a mass gathering 
as the Spanish flu epidemic hit. And as a consequence, thousands of people were infected and died in a very short amount of time. Now, conversely, in St. Louis, they stopped public gatherings. And as a consequence, they managed to prevent a large outbreak. And instead, they experienced a smaller number of cases over a longer period of time. So why is that important to you? Well, as we move into the containment phase, because governments are executing a plan to control the virus over a longer period of time, that means your building company may be affected for a lot longer than you currently realize. So that's why we are here today, because I know that you want to prepare your building company for the inevitable downturn that will be triggered by this COVID-19. And I wanna show you how to do that during this presentation. Now, my goal for this presentation is to help two types of residential home builders. For those who are sitting on 12 months cash reserves, both personally and in your building company, I'm gonna show you how you can use this situation to your advantage so that you come out of this stronger than before and really hit the ground running in 2021. And for those of you who find yourself in a perilous financial situation, I'm gonna share with you the steps you, you need to be taking today and without hesitation in order to avoid going out of business in the next 12 months and missing out on the inevitable good times that will follow shortly afterwards. The fact is working on your building company right now is the key to survival. Now, back in the mid 1600s, when the bubonic plague consumed Europe, Isaac Newton was a college student at Cambridge University in England. And as a preventative measure, the university closed for two years, leaving him to continue studying in isolation. Now, it was during that time of solo study that he developed his gravitational theory. In other words, he used a set of unfortunate circumstances and a, a situation that would leave most people feeling disadvantaged to his own advantage. And he did something amazing because without that time of complete focus, it could have taken years longer to develop his ideas. But the point is how this situation pans out for you and your building company will all come down to the actions that you take right now because what has happened has happened that is history it's all about what you do next that really matters now at this point you may or you certainly should be thinking well who is this guy to tell me what to do in my building company so very very briefly i started working with builders back in 2011 as an online a provider of workplace health and safety documentation of all things. Now, at the time, my daughter, Sky Stevens, was studying marketing at university. However, she'd become bored with what was being taught and she was keen to get started in the real world. So we decided to set up Acris Services, a marketing agency for residential home builders. Now, things went well and the business grew and it grew so well that we decided to expand into coaching builders directly on sales and marketing. So in 2014, we launched the Association of Professional Builders along with Alex, who was a professional sales trainer. Now, this gave us a unique insight into the challenges custom home builders were facing. However, it wasn't easy and you guys can be pretty harsh because when we first explained how to market a building company using lead magnets, we got some bemused looks from builders. And at our very first live event in Brisbane, one builder who had traveled from the Sunshine Coast with his salesperson literally got up and walked out when we started talking about charging for quotes. And then down in Melbourne, some of the guys in the audience, they literally laughed out loud when we talked about margins and the importance of pricing in double digit net profit. But we kept going because we knew this was how business worked. And when our clients started to get results, then we had the proof and things got a lot easier. But really, 
it was down to the early pioneers like Toby and Elizabeth Searle from High Water Homes who build custom homes down in New South Wales and Wayne White who runs a professional renovations company in Queensland who really paved the way for what is now known as the Association of Professional Builders and today in addition to Toby, Elizabeth and Wayne, the Association of Professional Builders coaches more than 221 residential building companies in five countries, making it the largest coaching company for custom home builders in the world. Now, I don't say that to brag, but I simply wanna give you context for the information that I'm about to share with you. So why am I placing so much emphasis on working on your building company right now, rather than simply focusing on battening down the hatches and just preparing for the worst? Well, it came about after I came across a book called The Five Mistakes Every Investor Makes by Peter Malouk. Now in his book, Peter explained that every time the market crashes, it appears different this time. There is always a reason as to why it's different and why the world really could implode and never recover. Now, in 2008, it was the banking crisis. In 2001, it was the dot-com bubble. 1997, the Asian financial crisis. Now, each time, the thing that really scared the market was that this time it was different. And that's what led to irrational panic. Now, the book concluded that there would be another crash and another and another. And each time it would be perceived as being different. However, it's not enough to be aware that at some point in the future, markets will crash. And the most logical thing to do is not to panic because we are all human beings, which means we all make irrational decisions because that is how we've been designed. And that means we need triggers in place that deliver a structured, logical response to an emotional situation. Now, in terms of investment, it's all about rebalancing. Now, this is where investors hold a percentage in cash or bonds against a percentage in equities. Now, periodically, they will rebalance their portfolios systematically and without emotion. So if stocks go down, then their percentage of cash in the portfolio is higher and they are forced to buy more equities, even if it looks like the world is coming to an end. And conversely, if stocks go up, then they will end up with a higher percentage of equities in their portfolio and they're going to be forced to sell some in order to bring up the cash percentage in their portfolio. And what that does, that effectively locks in the gains and protects them from a future downturn. Now, I discovered that by using this methodology in business, it's not only possible to build up strong reserves that protect you from these economic cycles, but it always allows for more rational, longer term thinking in times of uncertainty. And it works especially well for residential building companies. Managing large sums of revenue with low profit margins and onerous contracts that demand fixed prices and rigid timelines, that requires a lot of planning in advance. And a lot of the time, it's simply not possible to predict what lies ahead. And that's why you always need a plan B. And of course, none of this is theory. These are all strategies that we have applied to our own businesses before helping custom home builders apply them to their own building companies. Builders like uh, Rocky Simons, who operates Vision Homes in West Virginia in the United States, and Thomas Espresta, who runs ESP Developments in Queensland, Australia, Claire Harbison from Coys Constructions in Victoria, and Brent Chatterton in Christchurch, New Zealand, who went from earning a wage in his building company to generating over 15% net profit after drawings. Now, over the past six years, we have coached thousands of residential home builders on how to set their building company up for success and also to weather the storms ahead. So 
The three secrets that I'm going to take you through today are how to safely guide your building company through the next 12 months by creating your plan B, how to be calm when everyone around you is losing their head, and how to hit the ground running in 2021 with a queue of clients who are all desperate to start building. So let me share a quick story with you. Back in 1988, I was running my very first business and I thought I was doing pretty well. I had my bright red Porsche out on the front to show everyone just how successful I was. But that really didn't show the full picture because the business that I was in required a ton of cash. I had to hold a lot of stock and also give payment terms to my customers, which meant that in order for the business to grow, I had to continually leave profits in the business. Now, that's not ideal when you're in your 20s and you want to buy apartments and flash cars and generally live the life. And the problem was all my friends were employed by large companies, so they got to spend everything they earned, whereas I just didn't get to see the money that I was making. So I did what every owner of a small business did at the time. I ran an overdraft just so that I could pull out the net profit out of the business and spend it on investments, things like a pension scheme and an apartment and, uh, and of course, uh, a Porsche. And it was easy because the bank manager was taking me out to lunch and telling me how good a businessman I am. I, I, I'm embarrassed, like I repeat it now, and I'm just embarrassed to, to think about it. However, everything changed in the summer of 1988. A new bank manager took over at my local branch of the HSBC, and he wasn't so impressed with my business acumen. Now, I remember the day that he came to see me in the warehouse, and he asked to see the financials. So I printed out the profit and loss report and the balance sheet for him. Now, I had no idea what he was looking for, but uh, I was just pleased with myself because I was able to print out exactly what he asked for. Because in my mind, I was a computer genius because I used accounting software. So back in 1988, I thought I was just so ahead of my time. How could he be anything but impressed with what I was doing? But unfortunately, he wasn't impressed at all because when he looked at the balance sheet, there was just $15,000 equity to support a business with a revenue of over one and a half million. Now, the entire business was being propped up by the bank's overdraft, and they could pull that facility any time that they wanted. And he said to me, he said, we're not here to fund your lifestyle. Now, when he said that, I couldn't believe what I was hearing because I was the customer, um, and I was a good one as well because I paid interest, I paid bank fees, and I had a $150,000 worth of stock sitting in my warehouse. So I was successful, or, or so I thought, but the man from the HSBC, he quickly brought me down to earth and he said, I don't like what I'm seeing here. You got a $150,000 overdraft. He said, the bank is very exposed here. He said, what do you think will happen when interest rates go up? So I just shrugged my shoulders when he asked me that because interest rates were already at 10%. So in my mind, they couldn't go up too much more, surely. And then he said, I'm only going to be offering a facility that is 50% of the retained equity in the business going forward. Now, seriously, in one meeting, he was going to effectively shut down my business. And he could because he was the one that was funding it. And by ripping out all the profits and then relying on the bank for finance, I'd effectively given them control of my future. Now, what followed was a, a bit of backtracking and a bit of begging. But he did agree to give me a sporting chance to save my business. And it would require a 12-month financial plan supported by monthly reports delivered in person to his office covering up-to-date profit and loss and balance sheet reports. Now, he was going to take a fixed and floating charge over both my stock and my debtors, which means he was going to be following the numbers very, very closely. Now, I knew he was serious, and at any moment, he could pull the pin and effectively just wipe out my business. So I had to learn quickly. 
So I went out and I immediately bought two books, Accounting for Non-Accountants and Accounts Demystified. And weirdly enough, I really enjoyed reading them. It's all about double entry bookkeeping, creditors and debtors, assets and liabilities, sales cycles. It was fascinating and I absolutely loved it. And once I knew what he was talking about, I went to work and I produced a detailed plan for the year ahead. Revenue, cost of sales, and every single expense was budgeted for. Thing is, I was no longer in charge of my own business. I was effectively reporting to a manager each month and then giving him a full report of what was going on inside my company. And I absolutely loved it because it gave me a level of accountability that I'd never experienced in business before. And as interest rates rose from 10% to over 17% in the next few months, I can honestly say that he saved my business. Now, one interesting thing happened at the end of that 12 month period. I delivered on what I said I would in terms of revenue and retained profit. And in return, the overdraft was set at 100% of equity rather than the 50% that he originally wanted due to the significant reduction in risk to the bank, which literally saved my business. However, he still expected that ratio to reduce down to 50% over the next 12 months, which was fine as I honestly wasn't too keen on paying 17% interest any longer. But it was the forecast versus actual expenses that got me really excited. And I remember sending him a fax because that was how we emailed or sent a text back in the day. And I, I sent him this message by saying, did you see how close I got to the forecast? It was 0.1%. Now, I thought that number was amazing. It was a number that I'd forecast 12 months earlier and I'd well and truly nailed it. I thought that he was going to be so impressed with my business skills, but all he said was, yes, I did. Now, I never really liked that bank manager as much as the previous one who used to take me out to Chinese restaurants for lunch, but he has probably been the most influential person in my business career and has helped shape the way that I do business planning to this very day. Now, right now, I want to help you to steer your building company through the troubled waters ahead. And you need to start by getting your financials bang up to date as of the end of last month. Now, before you do anything else, you need a very clear picture of the current financial health of your building company. Don't, now, don't rely on your accountant. This is something every single builder can and must do themselves. Now, once you have that in place, sit down with your key stakeholders uh, in the business and perform what we call a SWOT analysis. Now, this is where you look at your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities, and your threats. Now, your team will help you to uncover any blind spots that are sitting inside the business. And once you have an updated picture of the financial position of your building company and that you've performed your SWOT analysis, then it's time to plan for the next 12 months ahead. Now, if you've already done this, it's time to review that plan in light of the current situation, which is very, very fluid and it's changing rapidly, which means you will be reviewing and updating your plan on a much more regular basis than you would normally do. So create a plan, assign the tasks, and then execute that plan. Now, you may be thinking, I don't know what's going to happen, therefore I cannot plan. And if that's the case, you have your head in the sand. Stand up and start planning based on the information that is available to you today. Now, Mike Tyson once said, he said, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. But it's how you react to that adversity that defines you, not the adversity itself. And if you're thinking, I can't make head or tails of my financials because they make no sense. One month, uh, one month, the profit is up through the roof and then the next month it shows a loss. So maybe I'll just wait until my accountant does it 
at the end of the year. But if you do that, then you are dead in the water because if your accounts are making no sense, then it's most likely because you're not taking into account the work in progress accounting adjustment each month. Now, the WIPA, as we call it, will adjust your gross profit each month so that your profit and loss and balance sheet reports make total sense. Now, this is not down to your accountant because it's most likely that they are unaware of this calculation that building companies need to make. It's not even down to your bookkeeper because unless you've trained them, they will also be unaware. This is down to you to enforce inside your building company. And it's not hard and it's all been documented for you step by step inside your members portal. So just go to your portal, which is coaching.apbbuilders.com and select financials on the category drop down and then click on how to calculate WIPA. And inside there, you'll find uh, an easy to use calculator along with a stack of other helpful tools and information that's going to enable you to calculate your own work in progress accounting adjustment or you can even have your bookkeeper do it for you if you get them to go through this training and if you're not sure which numbers you need to be looking at inside your accounts then make sure you go through the construction financials monthly checklist because this will cover all of the key performance indicators in your building company that you need to be watching very very closely now this is so important guys even if you like i was back in 1988 and i've got no idea what you should be looking at inside your accounts then this action plan will help you enormously in fact this course is so important we made it available to every builder that registered for today's training because it covers all the key information outlined in those two books that I mentioned earlier, Accounting for Non-Accountants and Accounts Demystified. So if you did not take advantage of that generous offer that we made when you signed up for this presentation, then please email me at russstevens at apbbuilders.com and then I or one of my team will set you up with access to that action plan so uh, i wonder if you would be able to uh, thank you peter peter has put that email address in the chat box for you so just send us an email and we'll make sure you get access uh, and of course if you are a member of the apb then you already have access to this course which is currently selling on our website for 500 dollars. but if you're not then right now we'd like you to have it for free because we don't want costs to hold you back from saving your building company right now and okay back to members now for those of you that don't know how to forecast and there's nothing wrong with that i mean we hear this a lot even from builders in our private mentoring program then just head over to your portal and under the category of financials click on 90 day planning and goal setting and once inside you'll see that there's a 90 day planning template a step-by-step -step guide on performing your SWOT analysis and setting your targets for the months and quarters and years ahead so that is how to safely guide your building company through the next 12 months by creating your plan B. And remember, a failure to plan is a plan to fail. Are you getting this, guys? Can you see how important it is to get started on your plan B immediately? And can you see how you can change the odds by making changes to your building company right now? Go ahead and type in the chat box and let me know if this is making sense to you guys. And type in there, who will have their plan B in place ready for the start of next week? Go ahead and uh, type in the chat and let me know, guys, while I take a, a quick sip. Okay. Thanks, Lorraine. Well, maybe not next week, but we will get it going. Well, good on you. It's all about making a start. Jeff, email 
sent requesting the action plan no worries jeff we will respond to that uh, i'm sure peter will respond to that very very quickly for you okay guys now this is important because as the leader of your building company you need to remain calm and focused when everyone around you is losing their mind and the key to remaining calm and composed when faced with a situation that is out of your control is through a combination of information and looking ahead. Now, it's easy for someone to tell you to just calm down and take a breath, but that only treats the symptoms and not the cause. In order to lead your team through this crisis, it's important to action secret number one immediately so that you are armed with the latest financial information because better information leads to better decisions. Now, no matter how bad it may appear, having access to the latest information will reduce your own stress levels and having a plan reduces stress and anxiety significantly. When you have a plan, you're looking ahead. Now, in car racing, the most common mistake that a new driver makes is looking at the track in front of them when they're braking for a corner, rather than looking across at the apex of the corner. And then once they turn into the corner, they then focus on the apex of the corner when really they should be looking out at the exit point. Now, race coaches always talk in terms of looking further ahead rather than looking at where you are on the track. And it's exactly the same in business. We talk in terms of business owners putting on the binoculars and looking ahead. Now, just like a, a race car driver, it's not about focusing on what's happening around you right now. It's your job to look to the future and make tiny adjustments to the steering in order to be on the right part of the track later on. A business that is focused on what lies ahead in the distance is always well prepared. And being prepared gives you greater control over a situation and control reduces both stress and anxiety. Now the future belongs to those builders who prepare for it today. So make sure that your uh, that make sure that you share your plan B with your team. Now it's very very important that you communicate with your team and give them the the reassurance that they're going to be seeking because remember they rely on you for their income. So they will also be feeling anxiety due to not being in control of the situation and having very few alternative options at the moment in regard to alternative employment. And by the way, your plan B needs to cover working from home so that you can keep your team productive as you work through this challenging time. Because even if you're coming out of lockdown, there are no guarantees. There could be a second, a third, and even a fourth wave. We've seen it before in history. Just because you're coming out of lockdown doesn't mean that we're not going to go back into lockdown at some point. Now, in uh, suppliers and contractors, you're going to need to keep those guys updated as well. So make sure that they are aware of your job schedule so that they know what to expect. Now, update them on payments. And if there's going to be any delays, get on the front foot and offer them a payment plan. And in some cases, for locally sourced materials, you may be in a position to negotiate longer credit terms. However, for items in short supply, you may need to consider offering payment up front in order to obtain supply. Now, supply chains will be tested to the max over the next 12 months. So place your orders early and update lead times where appropriate. Seek alternatives where necessary. And remember, one is the most dangerous number in business. If you're relying on one subcontractor or one supplier or even one product, then you are vulnerable right now. Now, this should already have come out in your SWOT analysis, but if it didn't, then add to it as new threats emerge. Now, also, this is a two-way communication channel. So you need to be encouraging your suppliers and subcontractors to update you 
on a regular basis so that you're not left hanging on site. And if you're not doing it already, now is the time to utilize all the features that project management tools like Builder Trend and Co Constructs offer in terms of call forwards and subcontractor confirmations and completion updates. And don't forget your clients. Remember, this is the biggest investment they have ever made in their life. And any delays will result in additional costs for them with regard to, to rent and even holding costs. So delays will also be costing you money. So make sure that you update them regularly and offer alternatives for items not currently available. Issue extensions of time where appropriate and also advise ahead of time when your claims are going to be issued and then raise your invoices fast. Now, you may be thinking, I already work closely with my team, so they know what's going on, but take nothing for granted. Things will change very quickly, and you could find yourself working remotely. It will be important to remain structured and disciplined in the months ahead. So use the approach outlined in the meetings action plan inside your members portal. And right now, with the, the situation changing so quickly, it's essential to implement daily huddles into your building company. Additionally, structured weekly and monthly meetings allow you to go deeper and keep your team aligned. And it's all laid out for you guys in the meeting training, along with there's templates in there as well, which will help you to get started. And if you're stuck for something to say to your clients or... If you take in the approach that when something changes, you'll tell them then, well, that is not being proactive or managing client expectations. So make sure that you go through the course inside your portal covering managing client expectations. Now, this is a comprehensive training course that not only covers setting expectations right at the start of a job, it also gives you the framework for creating your own client handbook. And that is something you can put your team to work on during this window of opportunity that has opened up for us all. Now, when you've created your own client handbook, post the results in the members group on Facebook. We've seen some fantastic results already from the builders who have already completed this training and completed their own handbook. And don't be one of those companies that just sends a blanket email to everyone. Now, there is a time and a place for that. But in the case of team members, clients and key suppliers or subcontractors, face to face is the way to go. And if it's not possible to meet in person, use a video meeting tool like Zoom, which is a free plan to get started. Zoom will not only get you through the short term challenge of not being able to meet in person, but it will also help to improve efficiency in your building company in the longer term. And to help with communicating with your team when it, it doesn't need to be live, check out Loom software. Again, it's free to use. You can record your screen and even yourself at the same time. Now, tools like this are crucial for keeping teams connected while they're working from home. So that is how to be calm when everyone around you is losing their head. Are you, are you getting this, guys? Do you see how managing this crisis is simply a process? Again, let me know in the chat box. Are you ready to lead your team through this challenging time? Type in the chat box and let me know. I'm going to take a, a quick sip of water while you guys do that. Just looking back at the uh, the previous comments here, Simon, makes sense. Don't think uh, next week we'll be ready. A few numbers to crunch. That's That's okay. Get started. Proceed with speed, though. Don't let that term, that week turn into two weeks. Ted, looking forward to getting started. Good on you, Ted. And you've also requested the, the action plan. Good stuff. Simon's ready to lead. David is absolutely ready. Great stuff, guys. <clears throat> okay. Tom, already started today. Fantastic. Okay. This is my favorite part because... It's all about the massive opportunity that lies ahead of all of us. 
Now, at the back end of 2008, there was a custom home builder on the Gold Coast in Australia that had a queue of clients at the prelim stage who were all ready to build in 2009. Now, even though the news at the time was looking pretty grim regarding the global financial crisis, they felt good that they had enough work to see them through until the middle of 2010 when they felt everything would be fine again. Now, I asked the owners how many of their prelims they expected to go to contract, and they said all of them. Once they're at prelim, we never lose them. Now, at the time, they were turning away inquiries because it made no sense for them to waste time on people that they would not be able to build for in the next 12 months. But the problem with this strategy is that there is no such thing as a dead cert, not even at prelim stage where fifteen to $20,000 has been handed over by the client. Now, things change. And on the Gold Coast in January 2009, the lights went out for the residential construction industry. Six out of eight of those prelim agreements were put on hold for a year. One needed changes in order to hit a reduced budget and only one was ready to get started. And with nothing in the sales final to fall back on, revenue dropped dramatically and they were scrambling. They were trying to get new leads and then progress those new leads through the design process. Problem was, the whole sales cycle from lead to contract for this building company was over 400 days. There was no way that they could progress these new leads into contracts in time to prop up their falling revenue. But instead of reacting to the situation and restructuring their business, they continued on the same path in the belief that the sales would come through in time and everything would be fine. Now, by Easter, work on site was slowing down as subcontractors got wind that people were not being paid. And by June, it was all over and the company was placed into liquidation. Now, the sales cycle for a building company is extraordinarily long. The leads that come in today are the contracts that you will sign in 20. 21. Of course, the sales cycle is a lot shorter if you're quoting plans rather than managing the design process. However, that only leads to a situation where you're pricing against five other builders and the losing hand wins. Now, to win jobs at decent margins that allow you to grow your building company safely and securely, you need to be managing the design process, which means you have to be utilizing your time right now to attract the clients that will want to build in 2021. So consider changing your marketing message. Everyone in the marketplace is focused on the short-term consequences right now. Your job when you market your building company is to lift their vision, to look through the corner and beyond the apex and visualize the time when their dream home will be constructed. Now, over the next few months, your target market will become very bored and will be looking for entertainment. The opportunity for your business is to utilize a content marketing strategy so that you can get in front of more of your ideal clients online. Remember, the people that build new homes are not stupid. They are successful people, smart people. They know that this situation is short term and they know that we will come out of this at some point, and they know that the smart move is to get ahead of the curve. And right now, they need someone that is talking their language and answering the questions that are going on inside their heads. So now is the time to get started on that content marketing strategy that you've never had time for before. Now's the time for you and your team to be creating marketing assets for your company and work on your sales skills because this is truly a golden opportunity to follow Isaac Newton's example and go deep and create something amazing in your building company. Now, if you don't know where to start, the sales blueprint action plan inside your members portal 
takes you through the entire marketing and sales process for a residential building company. And if you've already completed this action plan that was completely rewritten and relaunched just six months ago, then go through it again. I often reread books and uncover new ideas and information based on where the business happens to be at that moment in time. And members of our inner circle of builders, the guys that fly to the Gold Coast every 90 days for a boardroom meeting to discuss their individual building companies in extreme detail, they all attend courses that cover information that they have previously studied for that exact same reason, because it is impossible to retain everything being said in one sitting and different things will resonate with you at different times in your business growth. So go back and rewatch the sales blueprint training. And when you're happy with your sales process, get started on your content marketing strategy. Even if you've not written a paragraph since you left school, you can do this because we've seen it happen over and over again with builders from all backgrounds. You just need to start. And the easiest way to get going is by going through the content marketing action plan inside your members portal. Now inside, you're gonna find a swipe file with ideas a template for creating the text for your article, along with how to create videos, emails, and social media posts. Now, over the past two weeks, we've seen our advertising costs on Facebook drop significantly, which means there has never been a better time to get in front of your target market using this strategy. And if you don't have any spare cash to start advertising your building company through these tough times, then it's really important to be maximizing the current opportunities inside your database of leads. So make sure you go through the builder's qualifying process action plan in order to learn how to talk to your opportunities and then advance them to the next stage in your sales process. Now inside this action plan are all the scripts and tips for creating rapport and qualifying prospects over the phone. And for those of you that are currently in our mentoring program, make sure you record your calls and send them through to Andy, who will review them ahead of your next meeting. And remember, stop selling and start helping. Now, this is going to be harder now than ever before as pressure mounts to close deals, but that's going to make it easier than ever to stand out from the crowd when you follow the APB system. So guys, that is how to hit the ground running in 2021 with a queue of clients who are all desperate to start building. And do you see why it's so important to be looking just so far ahead right now? And are you ready to use your time to go deep like Isaac Newton and work on your business rather than allow the time to simply slip through your fingers. I mean, don't be one of those people that waste this opportunity by sitting at home and just watching Netflix, because now is the time to be more productive than ever by working on next year's build. So who's ready to start to start that? Let me know in the chat box while I take a, a quick sip. Ready to get started, Lauren? Fantastic. Simon, ready to start. Good stuff, guys. This is all about taking action. It's uh, it's fine, like listening to this stuff, but the next step, gotta take, gotta take action. So, well done, Lauren, Simon, Leo, Tom, Mitri, David, Ted. Good stuff, guys. Fantastic. Okay, so for those of you on the call who are members, I want you to go into the members group on Facebook and make a commitment as to what you are going to be working on first, because you're not alone. There are builders all over the world facing similar challenges to you. The difference is they don't have the support network that you've got. So make the most of it. Share your journey and encourage other members who are on the same path. And for those of you, on this presentation who are not currently members of the Association of Professional Builders, let me ask you a question. How many of you are excited about the opportunity that lies ahead 
in 2021. And how many of you are feeling a little overwhelmed right now because you just realized how much needs to be done inside your building company during this period of uh, downtime? And facing a, a downturn, it can be a little unnerving when you're the owner of a building company and hearing everything you need to do in a condensed presentation like this, it's, I get it, it's not easy to absorb everything first time. However, I've only covered the fundamentals here. There isn't enough time to go into every detail that I'd like to go into in just 50 minutes, but I've outlined as much as I could for you, which is why it is so important to be a member of an association like the APB so that you can receive the right guidance, advice, and training that will ensure your building company comes out of this as one of the winners rather than one of the losers. So guys, is it okay with you if I spend the next 10 minutes just going over what's included when you join the Association of Professional Builders, just so that you can make up your own mind as to whether you'd like to join us? Let me know in the chat while I grab a quick drink of water uh, if you'd like to see what's, uh, what's inside the APB. Leo, personally overwhelmed. I think we can help you that with, uh, with that, Leo, by giving you a bit of guidance and a bit of structure along with a process to work through. Uh, Simon, a lot needs to be done, but happy with their current position. Lots of good points to work on. Good stuff, Simon. I'm glad you've, you've got something out, out of this. Leo, go for it. Okay, cool. And guys, uh, for those of you that don't want to follow this advice, uh, that is fine. I've personally been in business through the last three major economic collapses that led to recessions in Europe. So I'm happy to share with you what needs to be done in order to survive. But if you'd rather go it alone, then that is fine as well. Just let me know in the chat box if you'd like to not only see what you get as a member, but also how it's helped other custom home builders just like you. Tom, let's see it. Looking positively to the future. Fantastic, Tom. Good stuff. Okay, guys. All right. Well, let's um, let's go through it. So, have you ever felt alone in your building company, or second guessed yourself over what you should be working on in order to increase your sales or improve your margins? It's this is something we hear all the time from custom home builders.